and you're live. Okay, let me put it here. Well, let's not put it, let's. List. No. Let's check again. Please. Okay, yeah, because. Um, well, only one person has has transferred back during the day, but he was to, and he is actually joining in the streaming from the Aragon Aragon Cook. Uh, we are actually organizing and well, organizing the information flow is all running basically in a key Kiba's chat channel. Okay, so I was just announcing it there during the day. Okay, so. Aragon Cooperative. Uh, the way that I want to, to move this meeting forward is just uh, uh, start by a little monologue from my side, just to be sure that we are starting from, from the right context. I want to explain what is the context. I want to be very short with, with that, but if you guys think that I should be sharing fuller explanation, please ask. Okay, after that, I want just to, to share like main point of tensions, okay? Um, I don't think that we are gonna tackle every one of those, but I would like to ask you guys feedback to where to to go, depending on, on how you feel we, we, which topics we should be talking about, no? So, what is the Aragon co uh, Cooperative and why it was born at the, at the first place? Uh, it came from uh, uh, an idea from Jalda, the, um, yeah. uh, the person who's leading the, the outdoor flock team in Aragon. After she realized that the, the, the current voting mechanism in, in, in Aragon is not optimal because you don't have more than 1% of token holder actually voting, okay? And they are they are trying to look or for more voting engagement or at least for a better way to 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 govern the, the whole Aragon Agar network. No, after that, then this idea about uh, building up a one member, one token, one vote organization uh, was there. Uh, it was called the Aragon Cooperative back there, and it kind of born out of nothing with no clear purpose, but just like an overall idea about, guys, we need to do something, we need to play around a little bit with governance, let's organize in a different way, and let's see how we can influence somehow this overall governance process, no? Is it, is it the, uh, sorry, did I get it correctly, that it's, um, that they wanted to start it to also better inform the community of what Aragon, how Aragon governance works and like how you can participate? Go yeah, on. it's it's totally a community initiative, mm -hmm. okay, uh, which want to respond somehow to the current governance models by, by ANT tokens, okay? So, uh, a, yeah. So just to clarify then, this is the bottom up of Aragon essentially. Yes, the way that, uh, that I see that, and I think that many of the people inside there are seeing that, is that, is that the way bottom-up approach for, for Aragon. Uh, still, um, we haven't done a very, let's say, good job in clarifying that vision to, to everyone, because currently efforts want to go other places and so on, okay? Uh, I will talk about that later. So basically, we have like different, uh, let's call it silos from the Aragon team right now, which you have Aragon 1, Autark, you have Aragon Black, okay? I think that there is like one dimension here about community members that are actually not working directly in, in any of the, of the Aragon flock teams. But here, and uh, I leave this very open because uh, I think that organizations just as, as Giveth or, or even uh, other people that, that were participating in the original Aragon multi sig like I think the guy from Zero X uh, are actually participating in the Aragon multi sig and not following. But I think it's also a big opportunity to uh, include part of the uh, Ethereum ecosystems that are, are somehow related to, to Aragon as well, you know? 
so far we haven't seen any any much presence from from this side but we have people from this team actually engaged in the in the in the Argos and Cup plus community members just as myself for example Okay, so the first challenge that we faced after, after having one meeting in the Oracon, okay, was the engagement of people. Uh, during the first couple of months, uh, there were many, many initiatives from, from Luke, from Jalda, from other guy that's called Jose, whatever. Uh, Jose, whatever. Hmm? You know Jose, Jose? No, no, I like your Jose, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember his short his short okay. story, Jose. <laughs> but actually doing tangible work for the cooperative, okay? Um, after a while, all, all efforts like uh, stopped. There were no clear what to do or who's gonna do that, no? So that's when I show up after a month of being inactive uh, as well. Um, my work back then was what, what I was trying to read all the different uh, comments, posts, um, visions from everyone, and trying to convey all of that into a single manifesto. Okay, so the I I wrote down an Aragon minimum via Aragon Cup minimum via manifesto, so people could uh, build things on top of that, and that happens, I believe, at the beginnings of last April. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first of April, if I remember well, and after that, it was like a removal of the whole uh, the whole community. Um, <clears throat> um, some some people started also seeing opportunities of gathering resources for the co-op. Okay, gathering money for the co-op because uh, there were clear, uh, clear work to, to to be done. Okay. Um, people were like, well, but let's ask for some money so we can assign one or two people uh, to do that. At the very beginning, there was my, my personal uh, opinion was against that because it was clear to me that we still didn't have a defined purpose there. We, didn't, we still didn't have a, a governance structure, how to rule on that. But it was some kind of insistence in doing that and I felt into, into, into that leadership somehow that just two weeks later we were asking for some funding to the Aragon Network through an ATP. Was a good call. I, for me, I, as for the results that we have had so far, I want to say, I would like to say that it was a good call, but so far I don't feel like saying that because we have experienced some, some chaos around, around the fact that we have been having money without a clear uh, governance structure to how to handle that, yeah. okay? So a lot of things happened, a lot of tensions were exploding. Personally, I always uh, look at the good side of the, of, the, of, the, of the story, and I'm seeing a lot of learnings, all of that, because you actually experience how people react uh, when there is no money and when there is money close to that, so it was, it was fun to add, but, and the outcome of all of that is that uh, the people that were looking for organizing that were also uh, challenged a lot by different uh, cooperative members that they didn't want to just have these people doing the work, okay? So it was no easy at all to organize that, that all the self for because we have we have effort going the, uh, going in this direction, efforts going in that one, efforts going in that one, and stuff like that. No, so yeah, after two three weeks, yes, we have uh, some deliverables, but at the end of the day, I will I would say that they were not very useful because there were no recognizing uh, the effort of other people. So everything right right now, right now, right now is in a state in which. There is, there is like some people that want to reboot all that happened. Nobody, nobody get got paid yeah, for the for the delivered work, which is uh, which is okay, I think. I I say I think because I was one of the involved parts to to get paid, but trying to see the whole picture, I think it has sense that we didn't get paid, no. 
So uh, the moment we are having a, a critical issue about engagement because all this conflict that has passed in, in, in those in those week had actually like demotivate people to participate they don't they didn't see things going as smoothly as, as they would like to 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 see that so most of people well this is a disaster I prefer to uh, go do a step back and let's see if what's happened or I don't know if I, if I want to continue in, in this organization anymore okay so engagement is very critical from one side and from the other side we still have a few members uh, two three persons that are really excited about all this stuff and they want to move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward, deliver, 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 deliver. And you could say that it's because of they are they are really engaged with the with the idea of this Aragon co-op. You could say also that they are looking after the money. That's that's happening. We we are playing with uh, to insist in incentive mechanism, the monetary, the extrinsic mechanism, uh, but there is also in many people the, the intrinsic mechanism in which they are emotionally attached to this idea when to move that forward, no? So, but, so, yeah, just, So uh, the, the people doing the charge at the minute are largely motivated by extrinsic or intrinsic motivation? Like it's soft So by money or, or about the values and the things they believe in? That's hard to say. I mean, that's hard to say from, from, from each individual because from one side, at the beginning we, ha we had at least five people really uh, uh, looking forward to work on that even without uh, talking about money back then okay uh, but then also after after the, the money got in you start to see new faces there and it could be because mm, something that just called their attention about this I mean I, I'm not saying there is no intrinsic motivation Okay, yeah, and people just need to also pay for where they live and for their food, so there's nothing bad about the fact that they want to like get something in exchange for their value, so that's, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, exactly. But on the other side, something that I personally feel is that, yes, we have some agents that are there only because of the money. Yeah. Okay, May, they sell their speech very well about decentralization and so on, but as, as per the work that I've seen, it's like, hmm. Maybe you are not the right guy for doing this because you are not delivering real stuff. It's all smoke what you are selling, okay? And you are also in the loop looking for after the money. No? So I personally started to to individuate this kind of behaviors, okay? So uh, from from one person, I don't want to tell the name because yeah. we are in streaming and whatever. But, but how how did? Do you have a solution how to fix that? Because that is a tension. You told me about it before as well. That is what? That is a tension. How are you? A, a tension. So how are you going to like solve that? Yeah. Um, in my view, we have two. Uh, well, three priorities. Okay. Which is engagement, uh, onboarding membership processes, and also offboarding uh, membership processes. Okay. Um, about engagement, I have individuated like several different levels of engagement, uh, engagement with people, from people, in which I'm talking about people that has a genuine engagement, people that has an ungenuine engagement and they are uh, really working or at least showing they are working. Then we have other people that are partially engaged, mainly these people that are working here because they, they have clear interest in that. They have put efforts in that, but they don't have currently enough time and resources to dedicate all that in work, no? So that's basically why the, the main work is, is being done by these kind of people. Community members that are just around and don't have a direct role within the current Aragon, Aragon flood teams. So um, I was talking about three priorities, engagement, membership onboarding and offboarding um, processes and uh, governance mechanism the definition okay 
So this is where I'm uh, stopping for the moment. Okay, I have uh, well, my, I have an idea on how to tackle these three things all in the same process. But before doing that, I would like to uh, ask some feedback about. Well, what do you think about what I have just, I have just, uh, I have just explained? And if you individuate uh, any different priorities uh, uh, beyond this tree that I'm writing down here. Have a thought on that? Engagement, governance, Engagement, and governance, and membership. Mm. Yeah, membership is maybe even better because it's on and offboarding, right? So. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And with engagement, you mean like accountabilities? I mean people uh, sharing their opinions, people participating in the information flow, and people voting as well. Um, so like user interaction and member interaction? Member so interactions, yes. Yeah. Mm. I think if, if you're asking for feedback, I think the first thing you have to focus on right now is, especially being Aravan, of course, uh, and being cooperative, is on some basic governance mechanisms that you decide on, like how are you gonna reward people, and how are you gonna like define their accountabilities on which you base those rewards, because that's where you have your attention. You have people being frustrated because, hey, that guy's getting paid too much, I'm not getting paid anything, and like, that's creating frustration with a lot of people. Well, do you fit that into into governance? governance? Yeah, 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 definitely. I would say that is that is the, the basic governance. Yeah, governance is like, yeah, roles and responsibilities and reward. Yeah, we we have called this uh, workflow. Yeah, it's a workflow, but it's more than that. It's clear role. Clear role and accountabilities, and what how you reward them. The workflow is then what how, how you actually execute the big defining what they do and how they get rewarded, because the person who speaks the loudest get, loudest gets the most money. That that sounds extremely unhealthy mm -hmm. and not really sustainable. At the same time, I wonder if there's a way to instead of having the. So Instead of having the focus be on roles, because it is this sort of amorphous organization that people probably have like uneven engagement with. I mean, maybe they come in, they're doing a lot, then they do less, then they kind of remember and they, they get back engaged. You know, you can kind of focus on um, results more than roles. So like rather than I don't know. I mean, there are ways to set it up that way potentially. So instead of being like you're the person who has to make sure that X, Y, or Z happens. Just like we're gonna recognize and reward whoever makes X, Y, or Z happen. Like uh, adding metrics of success for each accomplished task. Yeah, or, right? or um, adding, you know, a s having the task and then somehow connecting it with the, the addresses of the people who contributed to its accomplishment, if there's some mechanism for doing that. Okay, you're talking about task allocation and task well, completion like, rewarding. And yeah, yeah. More, more uh, just establishing the task completion reward rather than allocating the task to someone specifically. Yeah, yeah. so I think it's a both and. Cause that sounds like a bounties approach, right? Like where you put up a bounty. Yeah, and like, here's the task sense, that we yeah. want. This is the task we want done. But something more in the middle where there's still. It's sort of maybe it's understood kind of in a soft way that there's probably, it's gonna end up being one of these five people yeah. who sort of has done it in the past. So make sure they find out about it, this or something, but yeah. you know. Not only get coined, but a color no. penalty. Right. right. Like who wants to go tell everyone there's a boat, individually message them and explain to them and do a write up on what the boats are all about, for instance. Or yeah, help shape you know, put together a proposal for this new uh, module that we're trying to integrate into this DAO or something like that, you know? 
Yeah. Um, I would say the, that the, there's a problem with like who's proposing the task. So what is mm. required is an assembly of several people to create an official task that can be put out there as an agreed upon need for the COP that the community themselves also acknowledge, rather than going, that's illegitimate power. Sure, you propose something, Gus, but, you know. So if you have uh, a board of several people that are somewhat community elected, I guess, they would have to be. But so long as there is um, smaller crews, as, you know, as orders of integration, so it's, you need to have the task validated as a valid task before it can be undertaken, mm -hmm. otherwise it just goes on a wall and everyone just ignores it because it's not a real task in their heads because there's no priest to tell them that it's official. Yeah. Well, there's no maybe funding that's been allocated to it by a multi-sig or something, yeah. you know? Hmm. So, it should be something like a place where gathering all proposals that has to be done, let's yeah. say, and then a process to select. To me, it's the it's sequence selection, iteration, indication. So everything out on the wall, big lunar phase, get everything out, and then you have a community selection process. Uh, so it's to like get rid of stuff going solar, then have a look before you decide on something, like before the tasks uh, allocated budget, people look over again and go, is there anything else we need to add to this list that we would probably want to assign budget to? Then once that goes, once that's kind of whittled down or soldered down, then you can go, all right, let's try this. You do it and then you go, okay, well that worked or it didn't integrate the feedback and start again. If I can ask, what kind of governance are you Using right now, none. <laughs> zero, <laughs> zero governance. There seems no. to be an issue there. Emergent. <laughs> Emergent. <laughs> <laughs> and my question is non collaborative again, emergent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Non collaborative emergent. <laughs> and what is like if, if have you already like, but that's probably part of like having like some initial rules first with the governance. But like the thing that just Josh just said, like having a sort of first. Uh, I always make them up. First a lunar phase and then a solar phase. One of those first exercises is probably going to be on like, what is the goal? What do you want to achieve with the Aragon Co-op? Because I, I don't see like clear goals of what you want to achieve with the Aragon Co-op. You're talking about goals or maybe a purpose? Goals, yeah, purpose. What's the purpose yeah, of the what goal? Yeah, what do you want to do? Hmm? What do you want to achieve? Hmm. There is no short, there, I don't see like what the ultimate goal is or the vision. I think if you do that first, you're gonna like it's gonna be easier to align people. If if they're not agreeing, then they'll step out. But like that could be like the first rule that you just maybe take on yourself, doing an exercise like we did this morning, like going in a brainstorm phase and then going into like this is what the Aragon Co-op is, and then like voting on it with with a, with a, with Aragon itself, and like making sure this is really what we want to achieve. These are our top priorities. And, and like, yeah, I think you need to start there and then because based on that, you can say, okay, now we know this, where we want to get, well, we need some people to fill the roles to get there. That, that is something that I, I have personally very, very clear. Okay, for me, it all will start here. Um, and was that decided by a co-op or is that how you see it? This is how I personally see it. Okay, so, um, and currently right now, it's very hard to say what what the code wants, because we only we only see maybe four people uh, leading the conversation. Okay, so we are. I personally feel like walking without seeing because I I I'm not receiving any signal any signals back from the mm. community. Yeah. Okay, so that's the the hard stuff. And I personally um, am looking forward to, and this is the part that I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I'm planning here. Uh, but I, I want to relate somehow these four points, okay? The, I want to make this purple, purpose definition transversal to all of these, okay? Proposing 
it will be awesome to have a dynamic like the one that we had this morning in Gibbet, but we are not uh, starting from 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 the same position because there is no engagement. Well, here is completely the, the opposite. You know? So maybe in the purpose definition, we need to go through a process in which it's not that, uh, let's say, putting all the people into the same room and having this mm -hmm. kind of open discussions, but mainly more offline, you know, going to each different individuals and putting there some tasks to be done, put asking them some questions, maybe in a form of, in a form of an interview or in a form of, uh, I have personally think about um, reading out a, an article about, that he, uh, it's explaining how Bitcoin is actually a DAO, okay? okay. And they are uh, chunking down like different uh, states of governance that you could use from the Bitcoin DAO and uh, replicate it in other kind of organizations, okay? One particular uh, um, thing that I'm very liking about that article is that they, they split governance processes into two big dimensions the first one is church and state. Huh? <laughs> church and state. <laughs> yeah, proof of work, proof of state. No, um. <laughs> no but it's, it's operational governance, okay, and more strategical governance. No? Operational, for example, in Bitcoin, the operational governance is the, the proof of work itself. No, it's the process or the algorithm that is um, allocating who is blocking, the, who is closing the block who is getting the, the reward and who, who takes decision on what is the true in that moment and then move forward. No? Uh, I, have it, I have it here, they split that up in, I uh, will tell you that in a second. Okay, uh, task division, task allocation, reward distribution and, and information flow. For example, in Bitcoin the information flow is very clear because you have the, the ledger, which is uh, transactional stuff, so uh, if you want information about what's going on, you just go to the ledger. Mm -hmm. uh, reward distribution in Bitcoin is easy because it's, it's automated just by the algorithm. But when we will have real people doing the work, you need to think that a little bit more and try to replicate the uh, mm -hmm. uh, computer mechanisms to uh, a human level. The, the computer process, try to replicate those to uh, human processes somehow. No? While from the other side we have like the, the strategical governance uh, mechanism that in the case of Bitcoin is that the, the Bitcoin improvement proposal is how are we evolving our, our organizations. It's not on operations but it's on, on a steering command somehow. I'm explaining that point. Mm -hmm. So that's more or less what, what I have in mind for, for some for the people. So I don't know uh, if we should do just a brief exercise here about about that. If you guys are feeling that, if your guys are feeling into it, or, or if you uh, are lost with what I'm explaining here, I want to discuss other of these points and also find that. Memberships is one per, yeah one person one vote isn't it so there's yeah, not no right. membership is, is more regarding onboarding and of ah oh, okay okay and onboarding in the sense that how we do prevent that uh, I mean how we kick off people kick out people from the organization if they are not engaged if they are right right uh, yeah yeah yeah. Because, yeah, also with one person, one vote mechanism, we have the problem of quorum. If we, mm -hmm. if if we grow that much, right, we, yeah. we will arrive to a, to a point which we will not, can't reach not be reaching quorum for yeah. decisions. So mm -hmm. we need to be also strict with that, mm -hmm. you know? So, I don't know. We, we, have, we can talk about, about that. We can talk about the... the what, what off-boarding mechanisms are you considering? Like, if you haven't cast a vote in this many... Uh, 
voting cycles, you're automatically, you're, you're, say that again, sorry? Like, what offboarding mechanisms are you considering? Like, let's say if you haven't voted in this many voting cycles, then your, your voting token gets burned automatically or something? Yeah, yeah something like that. People that don't vote after, after two, three elections, for example, mm -hmm. and just throw in right, like, random numbers yeah, yeah. here, but they will be uh, kicked out. Uh -huh. There are also some talks about developing like a token manager contract that is measuring who's participating or in 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 votes mainly. Mm -hmm. So it will be up to that token manager contract to burn out membership tokens, for example. Right, right. But we right now we don't have that. Right, right now we have one person. Uh, who's the talking manager for? Right, right, uh, he, yeah. He's assigned. Manually he's manually assigning. Yeah, yeah. Who's who's a member? And who's right, right, right. But that's that's a good for the short term. Okay. So we have three point. These these three points here. Uh, I have something that is where we could be talking governance. If you are feeling into that. Yeah, or if you have ideas on how to, to increase engagement or membership, we can go also. I mean, increasing yeah. meaningful engagement is yeah. always tough, right? You can sort of get more people to like sign up, but then having that sustained ongoing engagement is, I think every, many teams in this space find a challenge there. So, you want to go with that? No, I'm just, I mean, I'm just, I don't know. You're the facilitator. Oh, I think it, yeah. <laughs> they're all, they're all. No, I mean, if, if you guys don't pick one, I will, I will go for, for the governance yeah, one. Yeah, so let's, yeah, yeah. Which is the one that I have more idea there. Yeah. So let's go. Where is the... So let's let's start by the by the operational governance. If you if you guys are okay with that, how yeah, to sure, sure. how to govern uh, day day per day tasks and actions. Yeah. I mean, okay. Can I? <laughs> yeah, you can. T time check. Uh, it's it's halfway through like this portion. You guys were gonna go one after another. Okay. Um, but it sounds like you're in the middle of things. So. Yeah, actually, it's maybe 10, maximum 15 minutes. If I'm, I'm good to sacrifice, yeah. I, I don't know how this will go. It's experimental, so yeah, please take your time. Yeah, okay, cool. So... Uh, we'll get that okay. Sorry, we'll there is another one of these because this is not working very well. Cool. There's another marker that I could use, maybe this one. Black. Black is best. Okay, cool. That microphone. Oh, so we could have John. Yeah. We should keep that on the board. We know what's going on. Just the text and the white <laughs> background. <Yeah. laughs> okay, so let, let me let me read you guys um, the Bitcoin example. Um, let's make a, a thought about how to uh, use that in the in the Aragon cooperative. Okay, for example, uh, in Bitcoin, well, the mechanism is called is here is mining by proof of work comp competitive bootkeeping. Task division, it says, task division is based on the criterion of computing power dedicated for mining. And is automated by the blockchain software in a centralized fashion. So, hashing is, is about that. 
task allocation, miners self-select into the network. However, competitive bookkeeping only allocates payment validation task to the winner miner. Okay, so let's see uh, whatever here. Reward distribution is automated, randomized by design mechanism, uh, transparent, and is linked directly linked to task allocation. And information flow, well, everything is happening on the layer and whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So let's go, let's try to differentiate very well about task division and task allocation. I think that's, that's maybe important. So task division is, I think it is related to what you were mentioning before, uh, the first step, no? What are the tasks that need to, that, that should be... But I think Chris is probably right on the first task is setting the overarching goal, the, uh, the North Star rather than the right. Near Star, and from that then you can derive tasks as a collective, and then those tasks can yeah. be allocated. I'm not following that. Is it like you have to establish the fundamental uh, reason for the organization's existence, and then other tasks will kind of like arise as, as stepping stones to that goal? Yes, I agree with that, but... But you're right, yeah, it's, it's listing all the tasks, just making the big thing, so a going wide part. Yeah, on, on, on this moment I would like to assume that mm. that overall purpose, mission and vision is already established. It's already established, okay? And the task division, all, all of these uh, fields here will be looking with with that, like, right. like in, in, in its fundamentals. Right. But at the moment of dividing tasks, okay, or, mm -hmm. or uh, at least defining tasks, okay, uh, this is what I would like to, 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 to feel here. Right, right. Okay, okay so mm -hmm. this, is, this is, the way I see this uh, as easy as adding tasks to a board into a very autonomous way. Right. Okay? Uh -huh. While the task allocation okay, uh, I see this about how do we select people that will be accomplishing these tasks. Could be? Uh -huh. uh, sorry? Task division. The first, right. the first part of the process that you were mentioning before. Yeah. Just people adding in, in an autonomous way tasks to a single board, to a single right. pool. So task allocation could maybe be collective voting on which ones are... Which ones are the, the priorities, which one we should be ta adopting this... Yeah, this which, which ones somebody should actually be paid to work for. Like, yeah, you like need here's all the things we need first. done, but if you want to make a bunch of cat memes, which is one of the things we need done, we maybe are going to pay you for that. But if you want to code up a smart contract or write an article about like the ethos of the Aragon Cooperative or something, maybe you would get paid for something like that. If yeah, we, we have, that there is a reward distribution point after mm. that, so maybe that probably will see to that. Okay, right. So the tasks need to just go everywhere. Then it needs to reduce, and the rubbish needs to be discarded. So there's a dis there's a like, discarding process. Then there's the allocation process from there, because you have to create the task. Then you got like the big list. Uh, uh -huh. Everyone's able to populate this. It's completely open. Everyone can throw whatever they like at the wall. Then we're going to start cleaning it up. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to allocate because those are the tasks that actually need doing. Okay, so it's a task allocation by a discarding process. So, it, yeah, it's kind of like the pilot's um, decision process. It's observe, orientate, decide, act. 
observe everything there is, orientate, well, this is kind of what we need to do, decide which ones we're going to prioritize, which ones we're going to do, and then we're going to actually do them. That's, that's called an OODA loop. should be acted here, but just for the sake of staying to convention. Yeah. Okay. Act this act, right? Yeah. Then we have task task reward. Here, here, this is this is kind of tricky actually because uh, we will have, we can have actually, we, we don't have it right now, but we can have many ways to reward task completion. Okay. okay? One is with money, with dice, the the the, yeah, the dice that you have there, but we also want to play around with other kind of governance mechanism like. Meritocracy, for example, or yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can, when we want to, if we want to migrate to a different um, governance mechanism, rather than one member, one vote, okay, or maybe try out that for specific types of decisions. Yeah. You could also be assigning different merit ones. different tokens there. I think this is so like when we go everything and then we reduce down as we're deciding then what to post as tasks, that'd be the decision part and then the, de the decide part would be also assigning the currency of reputation or ant or die or whatever to that decision and then after that people can act on it and accomplish the task and then be remunerated according to the decision before that. So, uh, create the big list, reduce the list. As we're deciding, we're assigning a value. Uh -huh. So that's the task reward. And then action just triggers reward. It doesn't really, like, if somebody's acting, it means that they know what the reward will be already. Because uh, otherwise, they're not necessarily incentivized to do anything. So you have to know what the task reward is before people can act or not. But you know, that's playing with uncertainty and that will uh, discourage much. Um, like, you know, you've done a load of work that you haven't been paid for yet, you recognise that maybe it, <laughs> it wasn't valuable enough, but you use your time to do that. So, like, ideally the co-op or the funding would have come through first, then you follow through on the promises for that funding, and then you receive the funding. Hmm. Yeah, so it gets valued at the decision side. Of yeah, I, I, uh, ideally, I think that yes, all of that should be predefined hmm. somehow, especially in this acting part. I mean, bef just before act. So then it can either be a task or it can be a role because, like, doing it bounty style on tasks is one thing, and then also roles can be more permanently situated kind of things that are just like. You're handling this aspect of things, whatever your role is, you know. So you can have rewards in relation to tasks or roles, I guess. Hmm. I, I think we're not ready yet for roles definition. Yeah. yeah. We are. We are, for you, we are far away from that, but it still is. In that case, it would probably be a large community curated task list that needs to be reduced. Mm -hmm. The nebulous, unknown stuff, but. Tasks are very explicit, that's why they're good for bounties. Um, whereas, like what people do in an organization is largely more nebulous in any given organization, and that's why we don't go well. We're going to assign five quid to that, five quid to this, 20 quid to that, 15 is you have to write out tasks all day. It's like, no man, you're going to handle the uh, biz dev, you know, that's your role, your biz dev. You don't write out, I talked to 50 million people at 50 yeah. million conferences because it's just like it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. um, and the bureaucracy becomes uh, burdensome. Yeah, so. 
to talk on that, I have thought about no, having validation, but having uh, validator agents mm -hmm. somehow. As, and in my view, these validators should be actually people already that already have uh, a, a, a role into an Aragon flock team, for example. Uh, yeah. Remember what we had before, like different flock teams, different uh, like really trustworthy fellows of the Aragon network itself. Well, it, it, it's all the community members, those that actually have the time and willing to perform real work. So maybe it could have sense that for uh, task reward, we establish processes of task validation from these guys. Uh, yeah, I think it probably starts with the tasks anyway, yeah, and validation from uh, the outside or what the Aragon teams make sense. Yeah, then we need to, but it needs also to talk about there's there's some so this is the problem with uh, tasks even or, or with tasks um, is that by assigning a value up front you're essentially speculating on how long something mm -hmm. will take mm -hmm. and where and if it doesn't if it takes longer or shorter that then has a tension between like the listed values and the outcomes so there's like a quality control loop that needs to be in there so probably assigning values in a range so you're assigning a range of values and then getting the validators from one of these organizations Aragon Black A1 all that you know you'd have maybe Luke check in on a governance write up or something and go yeah that was a fucking damn good write up five stars kind of colony style five stars mm -hmm. full marks this is the upper end of our budget because the work was good the work was mediocre cool well pay it out but on the lower end of the scale the earlier thing the work failed this is not something we can publish or use well then you don't get paid okay maybe or maybe there's a small compensation for like you know universal basic income kind of thing where time is valued at the mcdonald's wage etc you know just so that people aren't out on their ass after spending weeks working on stuff. Okay, so maybe in the testicle allocation process we should be adding also like a statement of quality of that deliverable, an expectation of the of the people that will perform this, that task about how much he will wait uh, he will expect to be paid. Well in a second process after the task is, is performed adding uh, to that validation a way a to review. actually yeah. warranty well these quality metrics were fulfilled these were not yeah. it's gotta okay be, it's got to be explicit first like, um, it, like the, um, yeah it's, it's got to be clear the expectations the expectations need to be explicit so if we're going to say go run the Aragon Co-op well, okay, well, I'll do that, but what is the Aragon Corp? What were the expectations of running it, etc., you know? So that the, the task or whatever needs to be explicit. Um, or, well, not the task, the expectations of the task, you know? Mm -hmm. um. Last thing is, and with this I'm finished because I, uh, I don't want to move to take more time from your session, Josh. Yeah. Is uh, information flow. Mm -hmm. I think this is very easy because at the end of the day, you will be just selecting a channel. I mean, you at least select the channel for communicating stuff and also for registering all of these that we have talking about. No, for example, a GitHub and a specific GitHub repository yeah, for, okay, yeah. for adding the issues or whatsoever and then to evaluate that and also I think it's, it's also important to divide somehow all of these into time chunks, okay, like for example the first week of every month, we will 
be adding tasks while from the second week till the third we will be uh, deciding what and who will be doing stuff mm -hmm. and then for the next one uh, I mean a, a strict, a structure the, the operations in how in with life cycles of follow the moon sprints follow two weeks the moon up, sprints. Two weeks down <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I will put channels to be select um, time time life cycle definitions for me. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You could do yeah. So cycle for sure. Okay, so. Before closing, I will check if someone wrote on the on the channel if this there is some questions or not. There are no questions here, so this is it. We're done. Thank you, guys. Sorry, I was a bit distracted, but I was like half <laughs> listening. So that is it. Yeah, you can just hit stop streaming. Yeah, my focus for this.